All right, thank you everybody for your patience. Uh, thank you for coming to the Crypto and Privacy Village today. We have a bunch of great talks today so far, um, and I'd like you all to welcome our next speaker. He'll be talking about Rust TLS, modern, fast, safer TLS. Please give a warm welcome to Joseph Burr Pixton. Thanks very much. Does everyone hear me at the back? Okay, um, so my name's Joe. I come from Cambridge in England. Um, this is a project I've been doing for about the last year in my spare time. It's not really a work thing. Um, so what I'm going to be talking about is um, a little bit of memory safety evangelism, not specifically Rust, but you know, memory safety. Uh, and then I'll go through what is currently implemented in Rust TLS or Russell's, as however you want to pronounce it. Um, and then I'll be um, kind of justifying some of the things I haven't implemented with respect to um, well known TLS vulnerabilities. Um, and then there's a bit of performance testing and, and future work at the end. So um, uh, Russell's is um, a TLS 1.2 and TLS 1.3 draft 18 TLS library written in Rust, um, triple licensed. So it's quite as open source as you really would want. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit over a year. The first proper release was kind of a few weeks after DEF CON, I did quite a lot of work on it on the plane here and back um, last year. Um, but let's talk about memory safety. It's, it's a problem and it's, it's kind of like um, software engineering industry is kind of in a bit of a rut with it. Um, so let's 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 assume that the the last ios update is typical of um a large complex software project which is kind of modern it's not like from the 80s well some of it is but most of it has been written in the last 10 to 20 years um and so uh these releases get done every month, every couple of months. Um, and as you can see from this fair, so th I'm not presenting this as real research, it's, it's kind of lazy. Um, but hopefully you can see, well, two, uh, three quarters of all the CVEs um, Apple recently fixed are all memory safety issues. Um, and what I mean by the software engineering industry is stuck in a rut is this is kind of um, personified by this line here where they're saying we had a memory corruption issue and we kind of fixed it. But there's, there's nothing systematic being changed here. They're, they're very much in penetrate and patch, penetrate and patch, month and upon month. Um, so yeah, it, this isn't working. Um, it hasn't been working for, well, maybe since the early 90s. It wasn't working before then, but no one was really, really cared. Um, so, um, there, slight, um, there is a little bit of rust evangelism, but I'm trying to tone it down, because basically coming and telling people to rewrite everything in rust is at best counterproductive. Um, it's also not actually necessary um, if you choose which bits you're going to rewrite in, in whatever memory safe language you like, um, then it's, you, you, you know, you can choose your attack surface. If you, you say, oh, TLS is an important attack surface, which it is, um, then re-implement re that in Rust and stick it in front of your random thing like Apache or Nginx, which is all written in C or C++ or whatever. Um, uh, so there, there's, there's, it, it's not a case of a total case of just choosing a programming language as well. Um, it gets more complicated, like Node.js only recently um, removed an API which was like 
the heartbeat plimit- heartbleed primitive that you'd want um, and actual real JavaScript um, uh, uh, projects had CVEs as a result of this this terribly insane API that they implemented. So yeah, it needs more attention than just write everything in, rewrite everything in Rust or Go or JavaScript, but um, you know, rewrite everything in Rust is a good first step. Um, so Rust for people who haven't come across it is a um, programming language which came out of Mozilla. Um, it, it's memory safe and concurrency safe and what I mean by that is when you write stuff, um, a whole class of vulnerabilities are basically impossible um, uh, uh, to achieve if you were thinking that a vulnerability was something that you wanted to have. Um, there is a, an unsafe subset, so there's an unsafe um, keyword which introduces basically unconstrained memory access, um, calling into C libraries, all this kind of thing. So that's, that's a good um, trapdoor to um, do from function interfaces, so calling into libraries written in C, C++, and, and the other way. It's got a really good type system, so in, in terms of like, there's like a, a trade-off between how good your type system is and how complex, complex it is. Rust is, I would say, um, it's more complicated than Go, it's more complicated than C, it's less complicated than C++. Um, so I've been writing C++ since about 1998, something like that, and I still could not claim to know the whole language. I've been writing Rust for maybe a year and a half, and well, I, th I feel like I'm closer to that, maybe not totally there, but you know. Um, the other important thing is um, it's got no runtime run overhead like Go does. So Go has a garbage collector and a bunch of other runtime overhead for doing um, uh, lightweight concurrency. Rust doesn't have any of that. So um, that makes Rust quite good for um, embedded programming where you don't really have any of the stuff that you'd need to have, um, uh, well, you don't have any resources to run a concurrent garbage, garbage collector or anything. Oh, and it's quite quick as well. It can be quicker than C in some certain circumstances, mainly due to um, uh, aliasing. So there's this thing in C called aliasing where basically if you've got a function with two arguments of the same type, then they can in fact overlap and writes to one can invalidate the other. Um, that can't happen in safe Rust and so there's a whole slew of other optimizations that, um, that the compiler can take um, advantage of. Um, so Russell's, uh, apart, <clears throat> apart from all the, the memory safety stuff, I've also been trying to um, learn from some of the slightly poor API um, designs that have been um, a, a kind of a common feature of other TLS libraries. Um, and so the, the, the inspiration here is this um, uh, uh, paper from, well, five years ago now, um, from Dan Bernay. Um, the last paragraph is the, mo is the one that you should read if you're just gonna read any of it, but um, that's what I've been trying to go for. So. My, my kind of use case here is you have a program, you want to call an API, say GitHub or AWS or something like that, um, but you don't, you, you're, not, you're not interested in TLS, you're more interested in talking to GitHub, talking to AWS, something like that. Um, and because uh, TLS, HTTPS is such a given these days, there's a lot of um, such users who just don't want to, who really shouldn't be tasked with working out what hostname verification actually means um, and certificate verification, all this, all this stuff that is necessary but redundant if 100 people do it all different ways. Um, 
also the security outcomes of making everyone do it are poor. Um, so this is what is currently implemented. Um, I've gone for a quite conservative set of, of, of features. Um, I should say uh, TLS 1.3 is still not standardized, but um, there are, it's been progressing in drafts. Uh, draft 18 is the most common current one. So um, if you see TLS 1.3 on the public internet at the minute, it will be draft 18. Um, draft 19, 20, and now 21 um, are all kind of minor tweaks. They're, they're incompatible but they're minor tweaks and so it doesn't actually make sense to break compatibility with the rest of the internet at the minute while people are doing, you know, um, um, testing. Uh, the other thing is um, Russell's always does forward, forward secrecy. So there's no implementation of um, RSA uh, key encap encapsulation cipher suites which are, well, very, Kind of crap. Um, the other, th well, there's a slide later, but um, TLS 1.3 has also abolished this, so it's kind of similar. Um, and the other thing is, server authentication is basically non-negotiable. So you don't, you, you both don't need to do anything, and also it's kind of hard to turn off. Um, uh, the other thing, um, which is very, very recent, is um, OCSP and SET pinning. Um, SET is uh, related to certificate transparency. So this is basically a proof that the certificate you've just been given by a server has been included um, on a certificate transparency log. Um, and I think sometime later this year, Chrome will be requiring that um, all servers provide at least two valid SETs along with certificate to prove that um, certificate transparency is in play. Uh, yeah. So this is what the dependencies look like. Um, so there's Russell's down at the bottom there. Um, <clears throat> for users of, of, so first of all, setback, um, Rust has a package manager called Cargo. Um, all these orange boxes are, are crates, so they're individually versioned, separate um, uh, uh, modules, all stored in their own version history and everything. Um, so the bottom here, CT logs is um, a list of all the valid CT logs from Google, web PKI roots is all Mozilla's, root CA is minus a bunch, um, which have been bad. Um, <laughs> Uh, SCT.RS is a very recent um, SCT validation library, um, which I wrote. WebPKI is a cert validation thing written by um, Brian, Brian Smith. Um, and then at the top, which is the kind of uh, apex of all these, there's Ring, which is also written by Brian Smith. Um, and that's got a lineage from Boring SSL. So, um, some of the crypto comes from Boring SSL pretty much unchanged. Some of it has been re-implemented in Rust in, in the Ring project by Brian Smith and, and others. Um, but yeah, I, I trust Brian Smith. If anyone doesn't know, Brian Smith, um, well, I guess his claim to fame was he single-handedly rewrote the whole of uh, certificate validation for Mozilla um, in C++ and WebPKI is kind of like not a direct transcription, but it's comes from the same place. Um, so there's that. Um, and now I'm going to go through some old TLS problems. So this is going to go quite quickly because it's um, you'll 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 notice a, um, a a pattern as we go through. Um, so that I'm splitting this into protocol versus implementation problems, um, but this is the approach. Basically, don't implement things which are broken. Um, uh, so particularly, I mean, I, I think these are fairly, um, 
well, no one's going to argue with me, maybe on uh, discrete log Diffie-Hellman. But in fact, discrete log Diffie-Hellman, you can't negotiate it properly in TLS 1.2, um, which means it's basically impossible to, um, to deploy and have people talk to you at an acceptable security level without having um, interrupt failures. OK. Is that better? OK. Sorry? OK. Um, so the next is a, um, well, there's more of this. Um, GCM nonces, well, that, that was, um, I think, disclosed last year here and at Black Hat um, by uh, Hannah Bock um, and co, I think. Um, I've put this as part of, uh, the, as a protocol problem rather than an implementation problem. What they reported was implementations which got this wrong, but I think it's a protocol problem because the protocol allowed them to um, make such a poor decision. Um, and so this counter from a random start point um, has a security proof. It's exactly what um, uh, is required in TLS 1.3. Um, and then all the rest are, again, not very controversial. Uh, and then triple handshake and renegotiation. Well, there's not a single renegotiation um, vulnerability. There's a whole stack. And the answer is don't do renegotiation. It doesn't end well. Well, it hasn't end ended well about three times now. Um, and so this is what I was talking about earlier which was um, comparing the subset of TLS 1.2 that I've implemented versus um, the design of TLS 1.3. Um, and you can see there's a, a, a quite nice overlap there. Um, and yeah. Um, and then implementation problems. Um, I'm sure everyone knows about these. The, the, the middle two are very similar. They're basically like imp implementations. Do th things wrong if you miss out messages or you send messages in the wrong order. Um, and yeah, so for Heartbleed particularly, because it's all, it's all anyone ever talks about in terms of TLS implementation vulnerabilities, memory safety gets you most of the way. Um, not implementing random kind of pointless extensions like um, the heartbeat extension, which was solely really used for DTLS, um, implementing that as well for TLS. Uh, it's a bit weird. Um, and also, um, always doing perfect, perfect forward secrecy, because no leak of a private key should compromise past traffic. It's just a, a terrible idea. Um, so I thought I'd talk about marker types. Um, this is something I did on the plane here. Um, so it's kind of new, but I'm not sure it, whether it's an actual new idea. I haven't seen it in um, other TLS or crypto libraries. Um, so the, the whole problem with go to fail was um, there was a function. It did some sig uh, signature verification, but due to an accident, half of the signature ver verification got missed off. Um, and so there was a jump from halfway through the function to the end, and at the end, there was just like a return with a there's no error return code. But actually, saying there's no error is not a, it's not a, <clears throat> it's not a positive um, affirmation that yes, I have verified the signature you asked me to. It's more like it was, it was fine, or maybe you know. Um, so you can delete the whole um, the whole function body, and still end up with something that seems to work, but obviously is um, terribly vulnerable. So the idea here is instead of having uh, the absence of error, you have a a specific um, type which has no size at all, so it's totally free. It's just a figment of the compiler's imagination. Um, and then you reduce the problem to 
just checking that there's only one route to making these types and that that route goes through um, all the steps that you want to do in the signature validation. So there's no, there's no concept of missing out steps. Um, and so th this is um, um, some code from Russell. So the top is um, us verifying that um, a, 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 a TLS finished message. So this is just like um, a check that both sides in the protocol saw the same handshake. Um, and if that's true, if, if that matches, then we produce one of these values. And then at the bottom, we've got the protocol state, which you really want to end up in, because this is the state where you can send application data um, back and forth. That means, so these types at the bottom mean by construction, it's the compiler will prevent you from getting to that state unless you've been through all these um, uh, uh, checks and produced the right types and then passed them through. So there's no, there's no possibility of skipping a, um, a state which produced, um, which say uh, uh, validated the server because um, the thing just won't compile. Um, so yeah, there, there's some stuff about testing. Uh, the one thing about testing I would say is this um, BOGO, which is the um, boring SSL test suite. That's been super useful. Um, that's the, they basically took uh, the Golang TLS library and then made it really, really, really evil, configurably evil. So it could do a whole um, suite of um, subtly different but broken um, handshakes. And that's pretty cool. It found some good bugs. Most of these bugs were like, um, I didn't send an alert in a particular place when I was meant to, I sent the wrong alert, that kind of thing. Um, there's some places where I sent the wrong alert, I, I sent a different alert to Boring SSL, but in fact the, the library just, the uh, TLS 1.2 spec says, send an alert and not what kind of alert to send. So um, I kind of aligned with boring SSL at that point because just, well, life's too short. Um, uh, the other thing is performance. Um, so the important number down here, um, this is just on my random machine at home. OpenSSL can do raw AES128 uh, GCM at 37 uh, gigabits per second um, on that machine. Um, the library started out quite slowly. It was very copy heavy. So it would um, copy the data you wanted to send a whole bunch um, while um, encrypting it, fragmenting it, and so on. Those copies got um, removed as time went on. Uh, and I think 22 um, gigabits per second per core is reasonably good. What I haven't done is measure OpenSSL in a similar um, um, phase because the difference between 37 and 22 is basically going to be all the protocol um, framing and parsing. So I expect OpenSSL to be somewhere between those numbers. Um, but I, yeah, I think 22 gigs per second per core is pretty reasonable at this point. Um, the other thing was, um, so TLS 1.3, uh, as, as it got mentioned yesterday, has this new and exciting feature um, coming to a DEF CON near you um, called Zero RTT. Uh, in, in the protocol, it's called Early Data, which is a much better name, frankly. This is when you're resuming a connection, you can start sending data with the resumption on the assumption that the, the, the resumption will work. The problem with that is that first message you send, that resumption and the data is replayable. Um, and there are some um, limitations to that replay, time-based, and there, there's a new thing added to the RFC saying, well, you should 
probably prevent people from um, uh, doing this kind of replay, but not, it, it, yeah. It, it seems like um, a very, very tricky thing to actually get right. Uh, the other thing, applications have to know this is happening because um, they can, in some circumstances, uh, servers at least, can receive like duplicate requests um, uh, under attacker control, basically. Um, so that's not great. The, on the other hand, it's basically in a state where it can't really be deployed because the RFC says you have to have a profile saying, so there might be a profile for HTTPS which says, well, you know, get requests without any cookies can be sent like this or something like that. Um, there isn't such any, there aren't any profiles like that at all at the minute. So um, I'm aware that some people have deployed it, but um, it's largely in a testing capacity rather than an actual production system, because that would be crazy. Um, the other thing is fix, uh, finishing off OCSP verifications. That's on the client side, checking that a staple OCSP um, response is valid and that your certificate that you've just got um, hasn't been revoked. Um, and there's PSK support, that's kind of been uh, bubbling over for a long time, but in TLS 1.3, PSK and resumption are basically the same mechanism. So with resumption working, PSK is a mi mere matter of making the API um, exposed to the, the, the rest of the world. Um, and implementing it in TLS 1.2. Um, and then the other thing I'd like to do is, is, is uh, stop this library from being kind of Rust-centric. Um, so it w would be really nice if this could be um, uh, compiled into like um, an Apache module um, to terminate TLS um, or an Nginx module or whatever. Um, and the uh, Libra SSL people came up with a nice C library, uh, C interface, I should say, um, which uh, it looks quite nice. It doesn't make me wretch, um, so that might be a good good choice. And um, hopefully, by the time I get round to doing that, there'll be integrations with um, things like Apache and Nginx. And then a third-party audit would be it would be nice once everything, you know, once TLS 1.3 has been finalized um, and once I'm fairly sure I'm not going to add you know more features um, so that's that I did have some extra slides um, but they're kind of um, screwed up so any questions yeah TLS libraries and how you, you know, avoided them um, through not inflicting broken features and the type system. But of course, you meant, of course, you know, you mentioned that you wrote that there were some bugs that you wrote in your implementation, which kind of by definition are bugs that were not prevented by those vendors. So, what were the kind of classes of bugs that did get written in Russell's, and how can we and how can we improve our compiler and type system tooling to prevent those kinds of bugs as well? Okay, so I'll just re repeat the question. Um, the question was roughly, um, what kind of bugs did I find in Russell's having written it, and um, how could they pre be prevented? Um, so as I said, um, most of the bugs I found were spec non-compliance, um, not in a, a security, um, so they weren't necessarily vulnerabilities, but they could cause interrupt problems. Um, so I'm, I, I feel reasonably confident about the security of Russell's. What I'm not totally confident I about is um, that it would be as uh, uh, interrupt as well as, say, OpenSSL or NSS um, or boring SSL. So those kinds of bugs, those um, interop kind of bugs, which I'm more worried about, um, uh, Bogo found some of those, um, but I'm sure there are some still there. 
um, I think really most of those get um, get squeezed out either through use or um, some kind of formal analysis. Um, there is a, a project called Mount Everest, uh, Project Everest, I think, um, being done by a bunch of people, including Microsoft Research, and that is going to produce a full end-to-end, -end formally verified TLS 1.3 stack. Um, so hopefully I can use some of the results of that to either generate test cases um, or generate some of the code that I've written from, from their um, formally verified um, uh, protocol implementation. And I think that would be pretty cool. Any other questions? I'm looking at you because you asked me a question. <laughs>